Good afternoon, everybody. Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well this weekend. It's been a hot one for a lot of us. In fact, we're expecting a lot of record-breaking temperatures across the board here, and it's even reflected in the outlook in the days ahead here. So make sure that you are keeping yourself hydrated and properly managed with your body temps here as we go through the course of the next few weeks. Also, air quality alerts lately have been a big thing, so let's make sure that we are doing what we can to take care of ourselves if we're going to be outside for extended periods of time if you have any sort of respiratory issues the best thing you can do is limit your exposure to the outdoors that being said through it all we also still have plenty of severe weather ongoing including a slight risk for today that entails two different areas that that are across the plains here we do have five percent tornado threats with both of these areas here along with a hatch risk for damaging winds towards the far northern and northwestern plains here. We also have an increased hail threat over towards this region as well. These storms are going to be forming a little bit later in the evening tonight, and we'll get into the details of that a little bit later. We may go live to cover this. We may not. I'll kind of be on standby with this one. The following day, we have yet another slight risk. This one has a much lower tornado threat. But this does have an increased hail threat that we'll keep an eye on throughout the day there as well. Then Monday, we have another slight risk towards the high plains again. We're getting back towards familiar areas, mainly towards the north and north central parts of Minnesota here. And also Dakota's in the action as well, as, parts of, as well as parts of far, far northern Nebraska. Then we have a day four slight risk for Tuesday. And then I have some great news after that. While we do have that slight risk, up towards northern parts of Minnesota once again, maybe the UP of Michigan and parts of northwestern Wisconsin. After that, we end up falling into a little bit more of a stable weather pattern in regards to severe weather in the moment, at the moment at least. We know this can change pretty easily, but right now potential is too low for these days. So looks like we could potentially be getting a break here, no pun intended. All right, taking a look at some of the model data here. In typical channel fashion, we often have the Euro to the bottom left corner right here, just like today. And then of course the GFS on the main screen here for our model comparison here. We're mainly looking for continuity here because there's a couple interesting things that we need to make note of as we continue to go forward. Starting out with the first few days here, obviously we have our severe weather threats towards the high plains and maybe even towards the north central plains. A lot of these are going to be due to troughs that are going to either be hanging right on the U.S. Canadian border or just a little bit to the north here. Also, we have this ridge over here towards the east, which is going to allow for that collision of warm to cold air masses here. We're going to continue to see that be the dominant pattern over the course of the next few days. But then something does start to change as we get towards the third day here. We do see this ridge begin to push off towards the north and east. This is going to help increase the temperatures over there as that warm pressure core really starts to expand out towards that direction. Still going to keep the rest of the east hot here, but the northeast in particular start to really like cook in regards to those temperatures, no pun intended. The second time I've said no pun intended in the video. Wow. But in any case, though, as we can continue to go beyond Tuesday and into Wednesday, we start to see a little bit of a change here, as well as this interesting feature here as well. GFS and Euro have been kind of picking up on this both just a little bit here. I'm not too sure what comes of it, but this does look like it has the look of a tropical entity. It doesn't strengthen into anything magnanimous, but it, even so, this changes the pattern here now because it moves the ridge off to the north and east even further, and then also causes this setup over here to zone out, become a little bit more what we call zonal here, where we're kind of getting more of the straight and narrow. With that straight and narrow path, we tend to usually get more fair weather. You need rising air for storms more than anything else, especially with severe weather setups. You need that warm, moist air rising, that cold air sinking. We don't really see it whenever the trough is like this. So it does look like we will get a little bit of a break over the next few days. Shower and storm activity probably will start to ramp up after a while. I would say probably towards the end of the week, maybe we could see something pick up again. But there's a lot of uncertainty with that as well. You do see that tropical entity make landfall across Florida and go through the southeast here. Euro kind of plays a different scenario with it if you look on the bottom left here, whereas we're seeing this actually go through Florida and then into the Gulf here. But interesting to make note that both of these operational runs are picking up on a tropical disturbance of some kind. Will this end up being the first named storm, which would be Alberto? Hard to say, especially considering what we have to talk about a little bit later in the video. 
but in any case those we continue to go forward here after that storm moves out the pattern does start to change a little bit we have that ridge out of here now in the eastern half of the u.s as we get towards the end of the month and then we start to see that activity begin to build back up over the western high plains as we go forward here just in time to close out the month and we're going to see a much more active pattern for the u.s as a whole here eventually we do start to see a ridge begin to build back in towards the central part of the u.s so it does look like we'll get the potential for maybe what's called an omega block so this might help the eastern half of the u.s start to see a little bit more in the way of active weather which for some of us it's good because the last week and a half to two weeks has been pretty dry over here but in any case though this may also increase the threat for severe weather then of course out towards the western high plains i still think this is a pretty conducive setup for them as well but at this juncture though right now it does look like we will get a little bit of a break in the action from severe weather here we might finally get to break the um the weather risk streak here because i can't remember the last time we haven't had a severe risk in any case though I'm going to go on to the dew points here, take a look at the moisture returns we could be seeing over the course of the next few days. Like I said, with the weather pattern beginning to change here, I do anticipate seeing a slowdown here in regards to that Gulf of Mexico moisture. For the most part, I still expect it to go relatively uninhibited towards the eastern half of the U.S. But over towards the central and western states, I do expect it to kind of dry off just a little bit as we get further along into the week. We do get, of course, a little bit of resurgence, so this is going to kind of be going back and forth a little bit. But as we continue to go forward, as we get further along into the pattern, with the pattern switching back to a more active pattern for most of the eastern U.S. and the central plains, especially towards the western high plains towards the end of the month, I do expect to see those higher moisture returns, and we do see that in abundance here. We even see some 80 degree dew points over towards Missouri, parts of Kansas, Nebraska, and even heading into South Dakota, which is really impressive. Some of that's Gulf of Mexico moisture. In fact, a large part of it is. But I do think some crop transpiration might be occurring there as well. As we continue to go forward here, with, like I said, with the pattern being as it is, where we could have that sinking air or that rising air towards the eastern half of the U.S., excuse me, we're probably going to see an increase in moisture over here towards the eastern U.S., which is going to be kind of treacherous for anyone that works outside. So, again, make sure you are doing everything you can to keep yourself hydrated. Electrolytes are essential and taking more frequent breaks. So we continue to go forward beyond that point. Eventually, we start to see more of that moisture return more so towards the eastern half of the U.S. or western half of the U.S. I cannot get my words right. But in any case, though, keep the ball rolling here we're going to go ahead and look at our temperatures and for the first half of this run if you, like i said if you're living towards the southern u.s whether it's to the west or to the east it's going to be hot it's going to be hot for a large part portion of the u.s here only towards south texas if you saw that outlook earlier is where we can expect any chance of below average temperatures even then it's still going to be pretty hot here because usually the averages around this time of year towards south texas are near the triple digits so just seeing that even then seeing that um, below average temperature area here that doesn't really mean a whole lot it's just going to be a slight variance really that's probably the best way to describe it at this point point. and this is heading into the middle of this week still plenty 80s 90 degree temperatures abundant across the eastern half of the u.s here getting towards 95 around new york here right around the big part of the city here getting towards looking over towards boston we're getting towards the 90s as well so record temperatures are likely over towards this region throughout the week if we go beyond that point though we do eventually start to see a little bit of a cool down and that's when that tropical system comes into hand into uh, play here and the interesting thing to make note of here is you can actually even see it on this temperature map you can see the counterclockwise rotation so continue to go forward like i said gfs it kind of curves inland more so goes into florida and then ends up turning out this way like i said i don't know exactly what kind of strength this storm would be at if this even forms into a storm at all it's a storm that's we're still waiting on to develop the nhc doesn't even have this as a risk area yet but so we watch that head out we start to see the pattern become a little bit more unstable after that point still hot out towards the 
southeast but eventually we do start to see that cool down begin a brief cool down begin to occur for at least a day or two but progressively as we go along especially as we look towards the start of july things do begin to look up a little bit more we start to see a few less 90s towards the southeast still see plenty of triple digits out towards the southwest and towards the central u.s we're dealing with record heat here as well so but for some areas we finally will start to see a cool down especially towards the northeast i'm very concerned about the northeast in particular because when they get heat waves like this some some areas within that region are not well suited for taking in people on those excessive heat days if you will so my concern is that people are doing what they're supposed to do here but in any case though as we continue to go forward right towards the end of the month as this goes the wrong way we do end up seeing a little bit of a change here of course this is 16 days out so we'll have to just look around for more continuity as time goes on here that being said let's go ahead and talk about the tropics real quick i know this is a long video and i apologize for it as it stands right now we do have one area of interest over here this is towards the bay of campeche but this is going going to potentially maybe impact some parts of southern texas here over the next six to ten days which is going to help keep those temperatures a little bit cooler and also increase the rainfall towards this area this is mainly slated to impact more of mexico if you ask me though based off of what i've been seeing we'll do a much more deeper dive on this particular area of disturbance by tomorrow but 50 percent chance of development so there's a good chance that this becomes alberto if that doesn't do it i'm pretty sure that potential system that we've been looking at on gfs and euro might so we'll have to just keep an eye on things but it does look like we might get a june storm here like I said in previous videos, we usually get one June tropical system every couple of years or so. That's about the average. We could have one or maybe even two. So we'll have to see how things develop from that point. So the last thing we'll do, we'll actually even pull up the Euro here for the uh, precip this time on the bottom left. We'll go ahead and take a look at what our precipitation could be like over the course of the next week and a half here, or really next couple of weeks. But in any case, though, we already know the severe weather threat. We do start to see those chances of some off showers and storms popping up here towards the southeast. Don't have high confidence as to how that pans out. But in any case, though, we do see a little disturbance here. Try to pop up here towards the Gulf once more. Like I said, with the wind pattern changing over the Gulf, I do anticipate maybe a little bit more in the way of activity. Any of these storms can get themselves organized well enough i do think we can get a name storm do i think it'll be a major hurricane no but in any case though this is what this is the feature that kind of interests me the most here as we continue to go forward here like i said this isn't an incredibly strong storm this stays above a thousand millibars usually the lower the pressure the stronger the storm but even so this will help change the weather pattern as we go forward even as that diminishes it still would have the ability to move any sort of big ridge or trough out of the way here but notice as we look towards the gulf and over towards the western high plains activity begins to pick up like i said these little tropical low pressure systems maybe even tropical storms depending on how things pan out do look like they will have a pretty big effect on the weather pattern here so this forecast is definitely not set in stone we'll have to just keep an eye on things as we continue to go forward here in regards to how things evolve but in any case hopefully you stay tuned to the channel here Make sure you smash that like button if you do also hit that subscribe button if you are new around here also make sure that you hit that notification bell to be notified of every video every stream and much more but till then you guys take care have a good rest of your saturday and i will see you tomorrow until then it's been tired metalhead weatherman take it easy